today in the society it's not easy especially in india it's not easy to convince a client that you're not using cement at all so does rammed earth have a any positives to it other than sustainability it's time tested so i believe why not um, rediscover that hello this is evil o from udaipur and today i'm with actually an old friend somebody i've known for a long long time um he's a fabulous person one of the first people that i ever met who was into sustainable architecture his name is ajith andagari of andagari architects now in karnataka hello ajith how are you uh, hi vasu uh, i'm fine thank you and uh, thank you for inviting me to this talk we have yeah, a nice to see you connection i hope it holds out through this because you're in a village yes and uh, yeah it's a luxury to have a broadband in the uh, middle of nowhere i yeah, hope it works now <laughs> where where exactly is the middle of nowhere in karnataka are you near hampi somewhere yes no i used to live in hampi when i met you but uh, it's been long time ago now um, i i have my own farm which is about 45 kilometers from bangalore city uh even though it's just 45 km but the nature and uh, you know the slowness out here it feels like middle of nowhere so okay. it's a, it's a place called magadi magadi is older than bangalore so wow. i'm a, i'm in a village close to magadi town well i just want to get right into why we're talking because sure. i want people to know what this conversation is about sure. so many years ago i met you found out you were a young architect um yes. I forget who introduced us actually but uh, I, I, I think Sahadevan the artist Sahadevan maybe okay. but anyway you came to go and you designed my father's apartment yes i did uh, which was an old um rooftop restaurant in Arambol yes when Arambol was still quite beautiful yes and you designed that which was a beautiful place for my dad and then i met you in chicago Yes and, and uh, we had yeah. cocktails on the roof of the Hancock building absolutely the, on the same day like a same date after 2 years or 3 years of uh, September 11 if you remember oh yeah it was our it was our 9/11 party it was our September 11th <laughs> party on top of the John Hancock building having cocktails that's correct i remember yes. that yeah 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 i remember it very well naughty but anyway <laughs> with my cousin Jeremy who's also an architect um yes. Jeremy Green but anyway the thing that intrigued me about you is you were very very much into i want to just say mud houses you were into rammed earth construction sustainable buildings that would basically return to the earth when they were no longer inhabited if i'm stating that correctly and you've really pursued it you've never really given it up have you Uh no it's a uh, it's it's from the day one i started uh, uh practicing i definitely want to work with the local material whatever it is it's you know changes from site to site so rammed earth is one of my favorite and it's one of the technique we use in urban uh, technology uh and also you know after traveling around the world in few places i've seen rammed earth and other technology buildings which is like withstood all the you know calamities you know 600 800 is 800 year old buildings so it's time tested so i believe why not um, rediscover that and with the modern technology if we can make it better for 21st century so why not so you basically when you when we say rammed earth it's not exactly the same as a mud house or is uh, it no see rammed earth is a mud house so when you call mud house there are about you know four to six different technique people have been using around the world for centuries you know so rammed earth is one okay i'll give you a better example so part of the great wall of china 
it's built with rammed earth. Really? Okay. Yeah. I and, thought it was all stone. Uh, uh, no, part of uh, it uh, is built with rammed earth. And also uh, Bhutan, most of the buildings built with rammed earth. Even today, the, the five-star and the seven-star hotels uh, in Bhutan built with rammed earth. And in Spiti Valley, you know, in uh, Ladakh region, you get to see rammed earth. Even, you know, it's kind of inhabited. It goes back to 600, 800,000 years. So does rammed earth have a, any positives to it other than sustainability? I mean, how is it as a building material as compared to concrete, which seems to be what everybody likes to use, unfortunately. Okay, okay so it, it's a- it concrete. Yeah, it's, it, it's like if you, if you see an ant or a termite, how it builds its nest. Okay, like it collects the material around. Same time, people used to, you know, back in the time, they didn't have technology or a wheel or a car to transport material like how we do today. So whatever it is, they had to select the material within the surrounding, like 100 meters to 10 kilometers max. So earth is one of the amazing and beautiful, which is we stand on. So rammed earth is something which you don't need to be a mason to build Ram Dath. Okay, yeah. I'll give you an example. If you, if you go in Bhutan, even today, the, the house owners, the women, the, you know, the, um, the, the you know, neighbors, they all come together. It's more like a celebration, you know. They, you need a very simple form work. It can be wood or plywood or metal, whatever, in today's days. And put the earth, raw earth, mix it with a limited amount of water and ram it. In a in a form work, and okay, this is one of so, the so basically you build like a wooden form, right? Yes, yes. And then you put the earth in it. Yes. With water or no, no yes. water. So uh, it, it has to be a very moist water, not a wet mix. Very moist, uh, you know. And also there is a thumb rule where you select the soil because it it need to have a kind of a clay content which kind of binds together, binds the soil together. So people knew, you know, uh, they were potters, they were, you know, they knew how to uh, play with the uh, soil. So sometimes they would use a binder or a binder as a uh, husk or sometimes um, cow dung or a horse dung, any fibrous say, material. Ask if you used gober at no. uh, Sometime because of if uh, it has a lot of fiber, basically you need a binder. You know, so sometimes some soil is really good. You don't need any binder. It has a small gravel. You just wet it, put it in a mix. You ram it with a wooden rammer or a metal rammer, whatever which has a weight and, you know, you can kind of pound it. And also the interesting part, traditionally women, they would pound rice or, you know, any other grains with a, you know, to make it as a flour. So it's not any alien technology they knew. It's like a, day-to-day -day activity so that's how they build they build themselves so and when and when you and love. your architectural team build with rammed earth are you using the exact same method or have you updated it at all we did updated it in terms of the the formwork uh, what happens see when you build it yourself sometimes you don't really care for the timeline and the kind of a finishes you know it's like for yourself but as a as a professional when you design or build something, then the client expect it to be of certain standard. One right. is the safety, one is the longevity, other one is the, you know, the straight line, plumb line, you know, all those aspects. So we also uh, consult uh, the specialist who knows how to test a soil. So we take a soil sample from the site and take it to the laboratory. So by testing the, you know, soil bearing capacity, so tell us, they tell us, okay, Soil is weaker, so you need to add a gravel or a sand or sometimes lime. And if it is a tropical area where your wall is exposed to rain, then sometimes they suggest you can use four to five percent of cement into the mix. So, and if it is an internal partition wall, it's not exposed to rain, then you don't need any, you know, cement or whatever. And also, today in the society, it's not easy, especially in India, it's not easy to convince a client where we're not using cement at all. Right. So it's a, it's a kind of a subtle uh, thing. Okay, we are using cement, 
just four percent. Just a little I, bit, a little bit. Just a little bit. Pacified. So, yeah, because you also need to work with the human psychology. You know, the fear. Uh, the home is something which is one of the most secure place for any any you know human being. So we kind of find a balance. So in 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 our practice, we make sure that we use less as possible industrially produced uh, material. So yeah. So yeah, it's, it's a, it's, you've taken, you've taken this, this beautiful old traditional method and you've kind of upgraded it technically and scientifically, and then you've come up with some absolutely beautiful non-traditional design, basically, I would say. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Absolutely. See, again, uh, this, if you're building a wall, you need a mason who knows how to you know, build a wall, how to mix a cement mortar, the plumb line and everything. Here, you need one guy with a common sense and, you know, who has an idea how to build a formwork. And you need um, helpers with the shoulder power just to ram it. Some of your first commissions were for building for resorts, if I remember right. Right? Correct? Yes. And yes. You were building for resorts in the Hampi area. It's close to Hampi. That was my first project that, back then. Then you've yeah. moved up now to higher clientele, I uh, think. Yes. Uh, and also, I didn't uh, lose the connection with... Um, you know, we do projects for higher clients and also mainly residential, tourism, institutional. But same time, we always work at least one or two projects with the NGO or someone individual where they can't afford an architect. So it's kind of finding a balance uh, where, for example, we are building a cost effective house for a tribals in uh, Tamil Nadu. Each house is costing about three and a half lakh rupees where they can't even dream or think about an architect. First thing, they need a roof above the head. So without losing the, you know, the touch with the earth, we kind of find a middle ground to build a beautiful structure using local material. Same time, it will fit into the 21st century because they all aspire to build uh, houses like the, you know, modern people or the city people. Well, houses. before we started talking, you sent me some photo collages, if I can call them that. Yeah. And, you know, one was of modern houses of various regions of India, various states of India. Yeah. And the other was of um, vernacular homes in various states in India. Yes. And yes. I said, well, the vernacular homes win hands down with being just absolutely beautiful. They're beautiful homes. And uh, the uh, modern uh, homes are so ugly. And I, I often have felt that when I travel around. It's like, why do people aspire to this modern home? But I do somewhat understand it because, you know, they're looking for air conditioning and they want to hang art on the walls and blah, blah, blah. So what, what are your answers to clients who are concerned about that? Okay. The first, I, first I blame architects because okay. we are trained to educate the client. We know what is right and wrong. You know, that's our, you know, uh, the profession. So what happens, you know, if you go back to that, uh, the collage of images, this is one of the, my, usually I use this in my talks with the students or whatever. So where we have still a chance in India compared to the West, which we, they already lost this opportunity. Right. Where, uh, India is a beautiful country with di diversity in terms of, you know, geography, culture, food, people, everything, you know it. So the, the houses or any kind of buildings were built based on the local context. For example, you know, you go to Punjab, you, use ri you eat rice. If you go to Delhi, you eat uh, you know, wheat. If you come to Karnataka, some part of Karnataka, you eat a millet. Because it's grown there, it's suitable for the weather, people have been using it. No matter how modern you are, you still go with that. So if you look at those collages, like I've, I've selected a few houses, you know, typical examples of states, like Kashmir, it's cold. You have abundant of local wood and stone and mud. So people developed a technology over the years without any Google search, without even seeing how people build in rest of the, you know, Northern America, or whatever. It's a direct response to the, the problem. So they build it with that technology. Even the craft developed based on the demand, what is available. Like that, if you come to Kerala, people build with a, you know, amazing slow proof with the abundance of wood. So they build with wood and mud, you know, how to tackle with the tropical climate. If you go to Rajasthan, they build with a really thick mud walls with a thatch roof, which is conical. 
or mud. stone, stone or marble. Yeah, stone or mud. Or, you know, uh, like so cool. They're very concerned about staying cool in the hot uh, season. Absolutely. See, in Rajasthan, in desert, they have a small window openings, so you don't attract a lot of sunlight. You just attract just enough for to see around, because right. with the sunlight right. you get a heat. So then today, what we're doing. We are having a big opening, even though it doesn't matter, are you on the desert or, or, or no, seeing uh, by the sea? So you're creating a problem. Well, by... I see that now in Udaipur, they're building some big modern apartments here. And some of them have these big, you know, floor to ceiling windows. And it's like, well, those work in some places, but I don't think they work here. You're going to have a huge AC bill, you know. See, what happens, you, put a, you created a problem without right. even looking at so you have a glass, it takes a lot of sunlight inside, you know, yeah. then you need to cool it. You go for an AC and you end up putting curtain because yeah. there's a lot of glare of light and also privacy matters. So it is like a universal way. You create a problem, you know, you can, you can refer to anything politically or in any way. You create a problem first and try to solve it. Right. So a, lot of people get, a lot of people get benefit out of it, not the common man. So... so yeah, so again, yeah, sorry, sorry to interrupt. And no, be quiet. I was just saying that you also work with like Adobe now, too. Adobe and yeah, some Adobe and the folder. You're doing furniture. You're doing yeah. furniture. Yeah, I'm doing so a, me, Tell me about your whole practice, just the whole practice. Now. Okay. So we, you know, we are at the end of the day, we are architects and designers. So I believe uh, architecture is one of the profession we held, uh, you know, we hold so much responsibility in the society. Uh, and what we create, it, it, you know, lasts for centuries, you know, generations. You know, it can be a school, it can be a house, it can be a government institution, anything. It, it, you know, it plays its own role. So even though, you know, when I met you in the US, I, I had an opportunity to, you know, uh, give a talk in MIT about the kind of work I do. Right. And even I had an opportunity to study there with a, with a kind of, then I realized, you know, I, want to, I don't want to study in the U.S. I want to study in my own country. The country is my university. Well, of course, you have to study where the materials and the climate is. Absolutely. So it, this Indian uh, architecture was always in my back of my mind. And uh, today, it's uh, architecture in India or buildings, whatever, built form, you see, it's, it's become like a McDonald's culture. Why I say McDonald's culture? Like McDonald's burger in Paris or Tokyo or Delhi tastes the same. Right. Right? So right. the building looks the same, whether in Udaipur or in Calcutta or in Gangtok, pretty much looks the same, except the name board where they're written in the local language. Right. So, so I, that's why I, I'm, I build a practice where it's not just, you know, building. So I also wanted to enjoy. So I personally believe to be close to nature and uh, connected and also grow my own food, whatever is possible and run a practice from a small village. So it doesn't matter. You need to be in the city. I was in a city for a few years, but I've realized that I don't have to be in a city. So I need to be in a place where I'm comfortable first. If I'm comfortable. I re actually remember your old uh, home that you built for yourself in Bangalore. Yeah. That was an interesting place too. Yeah, that was so, quite modern, the way I remember. That was before you got into the sustainability thing, really. Uh, that was uh, not my. Yeah, yes, you, you're right. That was uh, built for a client, and I rented it. Uh, so yeah. then, you know, I traveled a lot, uh, and I kind of understood, uh, you know, what is required. And also, there is an identity crisis in this country, and we're trying to call, you know, make everything look the same. It it doesn't work. Uh, so. So I'm here in this village where, uh, you know, also young, uh, interesting architects who are kind of working with me. They also come from different parts of the country. We've rented about eight houses in the surround village. They all live in the villages, village houses. They come to our office. Office again, I was lucky to get a 130-year-old beautiful courtyard house, which is just uh, 700 meters from my farm. Yeah, the, the, the photos you sent look absolutely yeah. Or just so, the token we, via and the, I want to call it a mission style gateway <laughs> with that little thing. It's just no, no, it, it's a very interesting house. So, you know, to talk about it. It's, it doesn't follow the local style. It also has a, some Spanish, you know, missionary. So yeah, yeah. it's an influence. So I'm right so, when I say mission style. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. 
So yeah, we 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 do projects, uh, you know, different part of the country. We don't work in cities, especially in Bangalore. We don't build any projects. I you know I can't relate to the kind of buildings which I'm going to build. So so since we're living here, we we live with a slowness. Same time, a lot of time for ourselves to think, uh, and also we have a farm where. Uh, I've run a carpentry workshop uh, where we build our own furniture to our projects. It's the wood is very much local Karnataka. Uh, we don't buy any imported wood and the carpenters are come from Karnataka and South India. And we also have a blacksmith, um, you know, the forging, we make our own handles and, you know, stuff for like that. So, so you're working with traditional craftsmen? Yes, we are, we are working with the traditional, you know, uh, the knowledge craftsmen. We're okay. trying to create something which will fit in for the 21st century because uh, I, I can't live how people used to live 100 years ago. I need to adopt to the, the modern thing, but same time without forgetting my past. So, right. you know, it's all revolves around it. So now, you know, we work with cane, bamboo, uh, the timber, non-forest timber. Uh, and also I run a farm where, you know, we're kind of building with the permaculture principle. It's completely natural. Uh, and after that, you know, I've kind of realized being an architect, it's my responsibility, not just satisfying uh, a couple or a, you know, a, a family or an institution. I need to go beyond that. So then I realized that the kind of projects I'm doing, my inspiration come from the village houses or, you know, vernacular architecture. So I'm kind of fortunate to travel around and, you know, see this. But not, how many other architects have the same kind of time and opportunity to travel. And that's when I realized I need to start documenting what is left in the country now. So we founded a, a non-for-profit organization called Samrakshan India. Uh, the common man houses, common man architecture uh, of the country. Uh, we started with Karnataka uh, from really small houses to big houses, not just, uh, you know, kind of a, you know, farmers or a, uh, the farm owner houses. Okay. So documentation, conservation, adaptive reuse. Same time, when we kind of, after doing so much of documentation, we wanted to see whether we can bring in a change in the policy of the government on support system. And, you know, it, it's, it'll lead into an ins building an institution of knowledge, uh, which is free source. You know, it's open for everybody. Uh, where that's, it's important. Even it can be, a, you know, if you want to build a house, imagine somewhere in Sikkim, okay, where if you are sensible enough, if you want to know, I want to get some inspiration from the Sikkim architecture. Okay. If you Google it, you don't find it today until unless, you know, it's a famous poet or some politician's old house, but you want to see common man houses, how they used to do it. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to put on information on the technical, you know, data and how people used to build, what are the pros and cons. So architects, anybody can get inspired. And so you're doing a very important service by doing that. Yes, by, it's I mean, a, it's, it, it is very important. It, it's a call of the hour. About 70%, we already lost it in the country. So what do you know, are we, yeah. Do you know by any chance, you know, Anna Perna Garamella? No. Anna Perna Garamella? Well, she's in Delhi now, but she was Bangalore based for the longest time. She's with Jackfruit Art and Design. Um, but sorry, she, I, had I a, she had a good connection with Hampi. I thought you might know her because she's very, very into everything vernacular. Wow. You know, I'll have to introduce you to her. Oh, that'll be and nice. She's and, running an archive in Delhi right now, but I think the two of you should connect. So. Yeah, that'll be nice. And, uh, you know, since we have been traveling to all these uh, villages in Karnataka, you know, we just started an Instagram page in the same Samrakshan India. You will get to see... The, the houses, so amazing, so beautiful. And it's not just traditional. The spaces can be completely modern. It's how you interpret. How do you inspire from what the space? Was among the photos you sent me, you sent me like a very modern looking building structure on the outside, but it was all done in rammed earth, I think. But then there was like a courtyard. And yes. there was a photo that looked almost like an opening, like it was the housewarming or something. Uh, yeah. What so structure was that? It's a, it's a building we built for the Karnataka government. It's a science and technology uh, department of Karnataka, where they're in a the process of building a science museum, uh, which is uh, north of Bangalore, which is closer to airport. 
uh, in a large area where it is quite dry and arid. So there's hardly any rain or, you know, much of vegetation. So we, you know, somehow successfully convinced the government and the agencies to build with the earth, which is dug from the site where we build like two uh, rainwater harvesting, uh, 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 you know, lake. So we got the soil, we uh, built this uh, one and a half foot thick uh, external, you know, uh, wall with a very small openings. Uh, and also it's, a, it's an auditorium and an exhibition space for the, uh, mainly targeting the students of the schools okay. around and of the, of the state. So, so there's that, other buildings near it. Yeah, it's one large structure with a, with a central alley where on the left-hand side is an auditorium, uh, which we don't have an AC to it and we have a good ventilation okay. system. And on the right-hand side, we curated, uh, designed a nice um, uh, exhibition space with a courtyard, you know, with a diffuse light and, you know. So it's like now, we just opened it last year. So a lot of people from the surrounding villages and the teachers and the government agencies came. So that was the picture is all about. And uh, yeah, and I'm, I'm quite happy with this building, particularly not just for the architecture of it, Somehow, you know, if you have a right intention, if you know what is right and wrong, you know, we all complain about government, you know, so it's, they're not doing much or whatever. Yeah, Somehow, I'm surprised you got permission to do that and funds from the government. That's an achievement in itself. Uh, yes, we, of course, it has its own story. Uh, I don't want to talk about it right now, but at the end of the day, uh, the result came out good. Uh, yeah. See, it's a, it'll last for, you know, hopefully more than 100 years and, People can, you know, the younger generations, you know, the, can get inspired. Uh, even, you know, for example, the school I studied, I studied in a government school in my hometown in Western Ghats. I still, the, the school building inspired me so much. Now it's helping me. You know, all those memories, which I, you know, the, what I felt more than the form, the, what I felt in the classrooms and the courtyards and, you know, stuff like that. So, yeah, that's the government building. The one more picture was a house which was, you know, under construction, which is again in Ramda, two-story building, very modern, very contemporary uh, planning. That house looked like it had a bit of concrete in it, though, because it looked like there was a concrete cantilever or something. Yes, so that we, we kind of, uh, you know, cantilevered a bathroom. Yes. So, uh, yeah. As I said, uh, you know, some projects we go with a complete, uh, uh, you know, true sense to its material. And sometimes based on the client, what he believes in. So we kind of try to find a balance. So you try to be adjustable a little bit for your client. Maybe. Yeah, you know, I have to be flexible to a level because uh, at the end of the day, the client has come to me with the trust that I'm going to provide him a comfortable and, you know, space. But, so you know, I, I assume, I just, you know, tell me if I'm wrong. I mean, I assume the concrete has a whole lot to do with global warming. Because uh, whenever yeah. people talk to me about global warming, then it's like, I say, well, God, even my farmers out in the village of Varda, where I keep my studio, I said, even they understand global warming because they understand it's cooler out there and it's hotter in Udaipur. And they say, well, you have all of that concrete and all yes. of that asphalt, yes. which holds uh, the heat. Yes, I, I'll, I'll give you a simple example. So why, okay, concrete is a, cement is a fantastic material by its nature, okay? So if you're building a bridge in, in a river or, you know, across a river or a sea or, a, you know, highways for infrastructure, it's a fantastic material. But when you build your homes, okay, what it does to produce cement, you need a lot of energy, you know, you know fossil fuel or a, uh, energy to burn it, to make the cement. So what happens when you use it in your homes? It emits that energy. And also cement, by its nature, it doesn't breathe. Yeah. So, you know, in Udaipur, compared to mud or a stone, it breathes. You know, it's a heat gain in, in, in the winter, in the night. Whatever the heat it gains in the daytime, it releases in the night. Well, it keeps I, you warmer. I can tell from my travels because when, when I've traveled all around India and other places, and, you know, you stay at a guest house that is out of concrete, you generally feel uncomfortable. It's humid. It's hot. You know, it doesn't really feel comfortable. And if you're lucky enough to find a guest house or a homestay that's in a traditional home, the first yes. thing you notice is it's much more comfortable climate-wise because it's, it's suited for the climate.
see, uh, you know, in my interaction with a lot of clients and, you know, the people from around the state or the country, a lot of people are aware about it. You know, oh, my grandfather's house, even my father's house is so beautiful. We never needed a fan in the summer. It was so cool. But today I build this modern structure. I know it's very hot, but what can I do? Everybody's building in that way. So, you know, we lack the direction. You know, we, that's why I said it's also a responsibility of an architect. We, we are the one who need to educate, you know, and through or adopt to that to our life. See, the form, how it looks, it's individual expression. You know, how I design a building, it's different than the other fellow architect. That's different, but the, the fundamental of how sustainable we can be, you know, and true to our nature, true to our local vernacular architecture. So it's not just in India, anywhere in the world. So if you can understand that, then the things will start changing. And even in India, the architecture is a very new subject to the country. Now from last 15 years, a lot of you know, young students are you know, getting into architecture. A lot of awareness is happening, but what is right and wrong, we need a lot of awareness I, I, for architects. I cry, I cry when I see heritage buildings being torn down, these old stone havelis go down in Udaipur, and it's like, we'll never build them again, you know? Yeah, absolutely. They're, see, we will never, we will never ever build in the same way. Even, even if you can, it'll be so astronomically expensive to do. You know? Not necessarily. Not necessarily. Not necessarily. No. <laughs> See, uh, you know, from the day one, I've been building these kind of projects. You know, sometime it can be 5% expensive than the conventional construction. Sometime it can be cheaper than that. What it does. Okay, I'll give you a simple example. Rajasthan <laughs> Carpentry. Rajasthan Carpentry is one of the best. Carpenters from Kerala, they're one of the best in the country or in the world. Okay, yeah, you yeah, know yeah. it. They all work with four hands. Like the West, they work with two hands. So what, what's happening in the Rajasthan carpent, uh, carpenters, the present generation, they don't know how to work with a wood because yeah. they all come to the major metros. They're working with plywood. So as an architect, if I don't create the demand of this technology, how does the craft survive? Right, exactly. Right? See, if, if you like, so now the present generation Rajasthani carpenters, they don't know how to work because they're earning enough you know, livelihood by working with the, you know, office interiors or I, I, anything. That was some of my own art projects and trying to get carpenters here because you see beautiful old things and then you try to get contemporary carpenters to reproduce that. Yeah. And they just struggle. It's, 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 they struggle because the skill level has been lost. Yeah, see, as an architect, uh, I'm creating a demand, the kind of projects. So then the supply where, you know, if I build a farmhouse or a house in a tropical or anywhere, I try to use the local material. It can be stone. If it is a stone, is a, then I need to rely on a stone cutters, you know, who traditionally used to, you know, then there is a demand is created. If you're doing a slope uh, roof, then instead of going for a steel rafters, I go for a wooden rafter. Then I'm creating a demand for the carpentry, right? Like that, you know, the lime plaster or it can be a polished cement or a arash like in Rajasthan you see using a line which is like a it's hardly anybody knows how to do it today yeah, so yeah, yeah. I play see if you as an individual you might build one house or two houses in your lifetime those, those red floors like they do in Kerala and yeah, Goa red, red oxide like, I think that might be coming back but you often notice that the ones that were built a hundred years ago, those floors are so gorgeous compared to the ones that are made today. Today, no. Today, we can do better than that. We can, can you do better, better than that now? Yes, we absolutely. We can do better than that. As I said, we have we have a knowledge about the material better than before. Okay, we have amazing products available and the tools available. So we just have to, you know, train these masons and you know bring in. Awareness. See, mason would earn the same amount if you build a, like a concrete slab or a, you know, any other work. He's going to earn the same amount, whether he's built with a red oxide or a lime plaster. Maybe he might earn a little more because it's a very, it's a niche today. So what, you know, in our practice, I work with these craftsmen from last 18 years, uh, where I have a set of team, you know, you know, there's a team who does only wooden roofs. There's a team which does doors and windows in wood. There's a team which does carpentry separate. You know, the team who, you know, potters, they make pottery tiles for me. They're still on the wheel. 
not machine made. Yeah, 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 yeah. And the blacksmith who are producing, you know, door handles and, you know, hinges and stuff for that. The panel beaters or the, you're making like a brass a wash basins or a copper bathtubs and stuff for that. It's all handmade. So that's why I said we hold an amazing responsibility if you understand that in the society. So, so, so when you work for a client, you not only want to build the home, but you also want to be supplying some of the furnishings for it, things that would fit. In terms uh, of I, I usually, yeah, I usually uh, ah. take, if, if I take up any project, I usually take up if it has a complete uh, involvement, like architecture, landscaping, interiors, you know, then only I take a project. Then what happens? I'm in control of the entire property, even, you know, when it comes to, you know, vegetation. So I, I use, you know, all this uh, sustainable, like uh, harvesting the water, energy, what kind of plants to plant and, you know, the permaculture principle or a natural way of building. So I, I'm not just a designing a building. I'm also building what I've designed. So yeah, with yeah. the set of people. So it's a lot of responsibility, but there's a fun to it. And uh, you find that people are becoming more enthused about wanting to live in a traditional home? Are, are more and more people wanting to move away from that concrete? Yes, mechanism? yes, yes. Awareness is, you know, for example, you know, as I've been, I've been surviving doing this. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So that means there is a, you know, there is, it's again, takes a little bit of effort to, you know, show them, show the clients, uh, you know, like a lot of people have a, a understanding that if I use an Italian marble, then only my house looks beautiful. Ah. No, you don't have oh, to. Silly. Yeah, there, there's a lot of people believe if I use a, you know, Burma teak or if I use a rosewood, then only my furniture looks better. No, you can even do a furniture with good quality coconut timber. It's one of the cheapest oh, and, you know. It's, coconut yeah. wood is gorgeous. It's just gorgeous. I don't understand why it isn't used more. Absolutely. I, it's a, it's a non-forest timber. Absolutely beautiful. So, and I can't believe here in Udaipur, you know, the Uday Villas, when they built that, I was here when they built it, and uh, they imported, they bragged about the fact they imported all of their marble from Italy. It was all Italian marble. It's like you're sitting in the middle of marble land, India. Yes, absolutely. Why the hell would you import marble from Italy? <laughs> you know, uh, if, if you travel in uh, you know, Rajasthan, wherever they cut the stones, you know, it can be Kota, it can be any sandstones. Okay. It, he, the villages around, people who work with, you know, this industry, they, you know, in the quarry, they get a lot of waste of, okay. you, know, you know, any kind of sandstone or a Kota or whatever material or marble. You should see their houses. It's, wow. for me, that's like the highly modern contemporary architecture they've been creating without having an engineer, without having a, you know, designer. So in Kota, nobody has taken that inspiration. People are building like a, you know, monstrosity, you know, cement blocks or a cement plaster. You just go to these villages. They build these small houses out of the waste material, which yeah. is like nothing. You just need a transportation and build it. It one, if an architect with a right mind, he can take the detail to a really international standard, beautiful and very local there's so many beautiful stones up here in rajasthan jaisalmer stone is absolutely gorgeous to me absolutely absolutely um, so you know you, you're understanding where i'm coming from oh yeah, yeah so it's, I've, I've always felt that way about natural materials when i bought i bought that big old i always say victorian it really wasn't victorian it was a mission style home in Milwaukee when i was in my 20s and uh, it had a fireplace. And the first thing we noticed when we were looking at it before we bought it, it had brass and irons. I don't know if we know what those are. Those are the things that send on both sides of the fireplace. Yeah, 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 yeah. Somebody had painted the brass with gold paint. <laughs> it's like, why? <laughs> why would you paint brass with gold paint? Why wouldn't you just either polish the brass or let it keep its own original patina? You know, see, it's, you, you and me can understand that. But again, yeah. you know, I've recently seen in near Mysore in Sri Ranga Patna, you know, by the roadside, I've been, you know, observing this for many, many years, a beautiful pavilion built, you know, it's mainly a resting house. You know, those days people would travel to the, you know, to meet the king or whatever, to the kingdom. 
So yeah, it's a resting yeah. house built with a beautifully carved granite pillars with a granite slab. Recently, I saw that it's painted with a golden shining, you know, paint on a granite. Well, well, I, I just have to tell you one more horror story because I we can go on and on with horror. Yeah, stories. yeah, yeah. But, You know, in Udaipur, our airport got modernized. It's quite a beautiful airport. I love Udaipur Airport, but they built a sandstone sculpture that mimicked the Victoria Tower in. Um, what do I? What am I saying? Chandigarh. Am I saying that right? Yeah, yeah, Chandigarh. Yeah. Chitorga. Chitorga. Okay. And when they first built it, I, I said, God, that's really gorgeous. They did a great job. For once, they really did a really, really good job. I really like this. It's really nice. And the airport does serve both Udaipur and Chitorga areas, obviously. Okay. So it made sense that it was there. And it was very nicely done. And it stood that way for about six months. And then one day I flew home from Bangkok or whatever, and they had painted it with like this copper paint. <laughs> <laughs> and it was beautiful stone and they just slaughtered it. You know, it, like talking, you know, talking about airport, this is one more classic example. Any airport is like a gateway to the place, right? Yeah. So when you land there, you know, if you're going there for the first time, if you're landing in Udaipur, that airport should represent what is Udaipur. Yeah. Not Zurich or, you know, the whatever, Paris or... See, that's what's happening around the country. Where you, you land in uh, Thimpu, Bhutan, I'm just giving an example, or Bali in uh, Denpasar. They're looking at the building, you feel like I'm in Bali or you feel like I'm in Bhutan. But if you, you know, you, you land in Bangalore, of course, Bangalore airport is really amazing it works super but for me it's swiss architecture right what are we doing are you landing in switzerland or are you landing in bangalore yeah exactly even you look at the bus stations or you know uh, railway stations some of them it can be any place on this planet not really even you know bus station in mysore you've been to mysore or yes. hospet okay Forget about Mysore. Hospet. Hospet. You're very familiar with uh, Hampi. Yeah, yeah. When you land in hum Hospet, does it speak about the, the architecture or the, you know, the richness of Hampi? No. Well, to show you how long since I've been there, I don't think last time I was in Hospet, I don't think it had an airport. <laughs> no, no. You, even a railway station. Or a, <laughs> yeah, bus a railway station. station. Yeah, a railway station. So uh, that's what is happening in the country where... This is a high time we, you know, we take a pause and think, where have we missed? And it's our job to educate the politicians and the bureaucrats. We can't blame them. It's our job in different ways, you know, so because they have their own responsibility. They may not have that kind of knowledge to see what is right. And right. Wrong. You know, another thing one of my friends pointed out, she said, you know, these really plush chairs that have very fat arms and fat backs and they're very fabricy, you know it's like she said well those were designed for european climates they were designed with all that cloth to keep you warm yes. during the winter and during the yes. chilly european climate but why are people making such things and buying them and plopping them down here in rajasthan they're totally out of place they just make you sweat See, it's the same oh. thing in, you know, in architecture, food, clothing, you can see it everywhere. But, you know, you know, if you go to Kerala, there's some, or, you know, some of the places, even rich people, they're like, if it is a, if that person is well-educated, he'll still wear a lungi, white yes. lungi. Yes, yes. Right? Because he knows the beauty or the, what it, what good things it brings because of the, you know, the tropical and also humid area. So at the same time, if he wear a you know, nice um, a suit or a jacket, he can't, he can't live. He'll, he'll sweat it out. That's what building does. Right, right. It's crazy. So what I, what I designed to Bangalore or South India, I cannot design the same thing to Himalayas or even Rajasthan. Yes. For example, we're building a, a nice uh, spa resort in, uh, near Himalayas. We're building completely from local material, stone, mud, and wood, to you know, taking inspiration from Himalayan architecture. So end user might be anybody. So it has to suit in, you know, with the international standard. So that's the kind of balance we're working with. 
So, yeah, now I think, I feel, I'm very confident because of this two and a half months of COVID, um, you know, people have gone back to their, uh, the native or gone back to their villages to be with the parents or a family. They started realizing the beauty of simplicity. You know, I would hope so. I would hope so. Yeah. So they will start realizing, you know, in the city, we're spending so much. Still, our food doesn't taste the same. Here back home, you know, my mom, my grandmother is cooking with simple things. for us. It's so tasty. Or the houses or the clothing or anything. We are just getting into the consumerism. Well, you know? People like, often accuse me of being nostalgic. And I say there's something about nostalgia that is required because you do have to look backwards once in a while and remember how grandma's cooking was and compare that to what you're eating today and think, well, what has changed? Yeah. Why yeah, was yeah, grandma yeah. better? Was it just in my mind or was it really better because of how it was prepared, what the ingredients were like, how they were natural, whatever. Um, so you do have to look back sometimes to the past. Absolutely. And our genes, you know, it's proven uh, our diet is depends on, uh, you know, what our forefathers used to eat, what our grandfather used to eat. So right. we kind of completely change the diet. Right. Now, that's why a lot of these problems are happening. Anyway, we're going a little long. <laughs> I think we've gone a little off topic with our ranting. But <laughs> anyway, I think I will say goodbye. Is there anything else you'd like to say to wrap up? Uh yeah, it's a, you know, I'm happy that I, you know, got into architecture, which, you know, teaching me life and the simplicity and, you know, respecting the surrounding and the nature and, you know, so, and also, you know, simplicity is the toughest to achieve. Yeah. So, you know, you know, it's a, it's a everyday process, you know, we're trying to, you know, make it as simple as possible and it's beautiful. So that's been our life journey and through our work, through our expression. Uh, so, you know, I'll, I'll continue doing that without getting tempted and deviating uh -oh. from something else. So, yeah. And good luck, India, good luck and congratulations. So thank you also. It's the hardest thing because we're so trained to want more and more and more in this materialist society. Tell oh, it sells it to us, you know. And, and people think that it's harder. It's, it's, you know, it takes one decision, which will, you know, it can change your life. You know, like how I took one decision to move to a village, live in a farm in my own terms. Right. It's been so beautiful. And being in village, we are doing projects in Andaman Island and Himalayas. I don't have to be next to an airport or in the city. So it's still possible. So, yeah. That's great. It was very nice talking to you, Ajit. I don't want this to get too long. Otherwise, people don't watch it. You know, I, I, I understand. Attention, anyway, thank you. attention spans. But anyway, thank you so much. You might have to send me a few more photos for me I to stick in here. I will. And hopefully, I'll have this up on Wednesday. So thank you again. Yes. yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Vasu. Take care. Bye.